Okay. I would like to start off by acknowledging that the land I'm on, and I know that Kevin's on, and probably a lot of us are on, is unceded and unsurrendered ancestral homelands of the Biatuk, and that the island of Newfoundland is the homelands of the Mi'kmaq and the Biatuk. We would also like to recognize the Inuit of Nunatsiavut and Nunatuavut and the Inuit of Natissanin as the original people of Labrador. This Acknowledgement is a commitment that we practice in action, striving for respectful relationships with all people on Turtle Island. So thanks for everyone for tuning in to Kevin. Oh no, Kevin, how do I say your last name again? Melanson. Uh, Melanson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for tuning in to Kevin Melanson's artist talk. He's one of our current artists in residence for the Winter 2021 FAR program. And FAR stands for Flexible, Adaptable, Remote, and Responsive. And we created this program during the early COVID days to highlight artists across the province and hopefully create some social connections between uh, artists and the community. So tonight we'll hear from, from Kevin, see what, he, what he's been up to. And um, we can chat more after his presentation. But just to introduce Kevin, he is an artist uh, living in St. John's. He's been here for the past two years. He grew up in the Maritimes. He received his BFA from Mount Allison University in Sackville, and he also loves feeding ducks and pigeons. And I think they also love being fed by him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the pigeons just sort of come with the territory. <laughs> they come unasked. So Kevin, I'm gonna let you take it over and you can go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, let's see if if we can get this to work. Uh, all right, clickety clackety. All right, can people see? Yep. All right, cool. So I'm just gonna go for it if everybody's ready. This is going to be very casual. Um, to the point where like this can even be a conversation throughout if anybody has any questions um and uh basically how i put this together was i went through an old memory card from my old camera saw a bunch of things that i had done in the past that i had sort of forgotten about uh yeah i'm hearing a voice okay okay so yeah, I, I had uh, gone through an old memory card, uh, saw some uh, old artworks that I had kind of forgotten about and was thinking, um, you know, th there was something to this, uh, even though I haven't thought about uh, these artworks uh, in some cases, you know, four or five years. Um, so because of this, uh, some of uh, these things don't have names. So I didn't add any names to anything basically. Uh, and we just have images to work from. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to be talking about uh, is a project that I actually worked on in first year of university. This was a, a final project under the tutelage of Mr. Jerry Robson. And um, uh, basically what I decided to do was draw a picture of every building in Sackville, New Brunswick, which is a very small town so the task seems relatively undaunting until you go ahead and do it um and it, it's it's a task that i never actually completed um but here uh we have about 1400 drawings uh and each of them is on a one inch piece of paper and basically how i did it was i just cut all these pieces of paper uh, took a map, went street by street through Sackville, and just took 10 to 15 seconds to draw each house and moved along. And then uh, I didn't actually install the piece until I was in fourth year. So this was uh, a show that I had at the back of Strutz Gallery in Sackville. And I decided to uh, install them all. They're not in any specific order, uh, but uh, it, it took about 20 hours just to install this piece and um yeah oh i didn't mean to click that but um yeah here's here's a uh, backed up view so you can see um 
how it looks. You really need to get up close to it. And what was really nice about this, this piece is that once it was installed, everybody who came to see the show would really get up close to it and try to find their own house, um, which, which was this, this really nice sort of like uh, community aspect to the piece that I wasn't expecting, but uh, I found um, once it had been installed. And uh, uh, it, while I was doing it, I was thinking that this would be a really nice project to apply for residencies with in places that I haven't necessarily been before because this is um, really how I get to know places is just walk around and just try to walk every street. Uh, and at this point, I, I had gotten to know Sackville pretty well, but it'd be really nice to do it in a place that I don't know so well. And so, you know, by the time I'm done a residency or whatever I'm doing in that town, um, I, I do know the place really well. And th this thing also happened where, you know, people would come out and ask me questions about what I was doing. Apparently there was an evil tax collector who had been harassing the residents of Sackville. So some people came out and were very mad that I was some guy with a piece of paper standing in front of their house uh, with a pen. Whereas other people were really curious about it. Um, the, the next piece I'm gonna talk about is um, one that I, I started working on in probably third or fourth year of university. Uh, I, I was really interested in print uh, for second and third year. Um, like that was really my main area of focus, I think is, is doing print work and lithography specifically. Um, and at, at one point, uh, at like three in the morning, I decided I'm just gonna clean up all my stuff, take one of the rags I used to clean up with and just run it through the press. And so that's what I did. I, I took a piece of paper, put a rag down, put another piece of paper on top and just ran it through a press. And um, this, is, this is what that looks like. And um, uh, it's, I, I really fell in love with how they looked and I ended up doing you know, a lot of them like every every time I did any printing I would clean up and then do a, a print of the rag actually you get two prints because you sandwich it between the pieces of paper so you have a, a mirror image print that's actually not exactly the same but but very close um, and the one on the right that you can see here is is what it looks like when there's not very much ink on it so there's a lot of white space um, and yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I like the idea of, um, uh, printing with residue. And so it's, it's this, uh, this thing that's sort of not really meant to be used for, for printing and really just gets tossed in, in a bin and taken away. And I used to do a, a fair amount of printing on rags. I would, I would, uh, write little messages on on the rags so that the, uh, the good people from Canadian linen who would come and clean the rags might find a weird little message to them. Uh, I don't know if anything ever came of that. Um, here's a, a close up so you can actually see how much detail you can get from doing that. Some of them, if they're um, particularly like soaked in Varsol or soy, um, look really muddy. Um, and you can see a little bit of that in this, uh, but there's also a lot of texture uh, just from the fabric, which I like. Um, the, the next piece I have here is sort of uh, building off of my love of residue. Uh, and um, basically how, how I made this print here, this is a wood block print, is uh, I was working in a studio with uh, a, one of my professors, Thaddeus Helonia, and he showed us uh, that he had this large collection of uh, woodblock uh, letters. And he was teaching us how to use uh, letterpress. Uh, it was a course on letterpress printing. So he took out these cases of, of woodblock prints and just basically said, write some words, pick a color, I'll show you how to use the press. And uh, when I saw these uh, 
woodblock letters that had clearly not been used in many, many years, uh, I, I was just thinking, well, why don't we not put ink on it and see what happens? Uh, and this is what happens. Um, so um, the, the words kind of, you know, that was just the, the first thing that came to mind. There were two dogs there. Um, um, so those are the, the words were just sort of like what I had the letters to spell um, didn't really mean anything at the time, um, but I like the words. Um, and yeah, this, this was just dust that had accumulated uh, on, on these uh, blocks of wood over many years. Uh, and you can even see fingerprints uh, on them. And uh, yeah, I, I, did, I did a lot of experimenting um, towards the end of university with just uh, trying to print without ink. I, I was printing with sawdust and, and um, uh, just experimenting with, with how to transfer dirt and dust and things onto paper in the most effective way possible. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how that worked. Um, it, this, uh, this next piece here, or it, it's, it's a couple of, uh, of series of drawings that I had worked on uh, starting when I had finished university. And um, the, uh, I, I had, uh, for some reason, just had a collection of smushed cans because I, I just kind of liked how they looked and I wanted to do something with them. And then um, at one point I fell in love with um, drawing on five inch squares of Bockingford watercolor paper um, with a Statler 05 pen. Uh, and that, that just became like my medium of choice for a while. And then um, because I had these, um, these cans, I was like, I'm just gonna draw those because it seems like fun um, drawing these wrinkles. And so I, I started doing uh, a few drawings of them and then after I had done a few drawings of those, I had started uh, drawing these images of grocery lists um, because I had also um, accumulated a, a collection of those. And the grocery lists I, I often find on the floor at work because I, I work at Sobeys and have worked at Sobeys since the dawn of time. And uh, so uh, I actually have just like shoe boxes full of grocery lists because I find them very interesting um, more interesting than, than the, the smushed cans. I, I like the drawings of the smushed cans, but I really like the drawings of the, uh, the grocery lists. And um, what I like about the grocery lists is um, that you, you, can, you can just tell a lot about what's on the grocery list. You can tell a lot about the, the person who is buying groceries based on the handwriting, the language that they're written in. I have quite a few that are in English or that are partially, um, uh, I have some that are in French or partially in French uh, because in New Brunswick, a lot of people speak English and French. Um, there's always something that's sort of odd on here. So in this particular drawing here, we have rings for book, whatever, whatever that is. I don't know if we sell rings for books at Sobeys, um, but um, I, I had drawn a whole bunch of these and I um, had applied for some shows uh, and in installed the works uh, as a grid like this. So you can, you can see here, I think at this point, I probably had around 40 or 50 drawings of these grocery, grocery lists. Um, this is at a show uh, in the Charlotte Street Art Center in Fredericton, New Brunswick, uh, if anybody's ever been there before. Uh, this is a space called the Penny Gallery. Uh, and uh, once I had been uh, offered the show in the space, I, I drove up to Fredericton to see the space and saw that uh, the gallery space was basically one large ramp. It, it's a hallway. And it's, a, it's the hallway where the bathrooms are actually. Uh, and it's one large ramp um, because the, uh, the building itself is not hugely wheelchair accessible, but some spaces are. And this is, uh, this is 
a, a ramp from um, one space to another. Um, so once I had seen that this, uh, this gallery was designed as uh, an accessible space, I started thinking about how inaccessible my work was uh, just in the fact that their uh, drawings on flat paper stuck to a wall um, uh, and, and people who have any sort of visual impairment have uh, no real way of interacting uh, with them in, in the way that uh, uh, other people would be able to. And so w once I had seen this space, this, this ramped space, um, I, I decided that I wanted to uh, have an exhibition that was a bit more accessible. Uh, and so I had decided to make a, a sound piece to go along uh, with this. Uh, and uh, this was a show that was sort of about found objects. So I have drawings of found grocery lists and found cans. And so I made a piece with found keys. Um, and what I'm going to show you is actually a, a later iteration of it. Um, so um, I, I had a large collection of keys that I had found on the ground over many years. And uh, I set up an installation where uh, they would hang from fishing line and uh, wind would activate the keys in order to uh, make a really lovely jingling sound. Um, the original iteration of it was uh, just like a, like a curtain rod with keys attached to it uh, and a fan on the other side of the hallway activating them. Um, and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to. So this was a later show um, where I installed uh, three fans to the wall pointing downwards and um, this, this worked quite well. And uh, the uh, jingling from the keys uh, was able to go uh, all throughout the building. This is at the Aberdeen Center in Moncton, New Brunswick. Um, the, the, uh, this next piece here uh, comes from when I started to become interested in um, textile works. And um, I, I, I had sort of like made the conscious de decision, like I am going to become interested in textile works because I, I come from a family of people who work in textiles. Uh, my mom and everyone on my mom's side of the family are all quilters, knitters, uh, you name it, they do it. Um, and they're all incredible at it. And, um, and I, I grew up around all this and, you know, I, I grew up knowing how to sew and, and how uh, different things work, but never really doing it myself. You know, like I, I knew how to sew, but I had never made a quilt until recently. Uh, and, and so I was, um, I was just trying to play around with what I can do with textile uh, works, even just as practice, just to, to try to get into it. Uh, and so I was, I was fooling around with different materials that I could use. Um, and I was, I was thinking about using like screen doors or, or different things like that and trying to embroider into them. Uh, in this case, I decided to uh, take a frying pan and drill a bunch of holes into it in order to uh, make holes that I could then embroider into. And I, I did similar works with, with plywood and a, a few different uh, materials. Um, and then eventually decided that uh, trying to do textile works without fabric was just sort of uh, like a little bit of a cop out uh, for me. And like, I, if, if, I'm going, if I'm going to do textiles, I need to learn how to do textiles. Uh, and so I started actually focusing uh, on it uh, later on. Uh, and um, the, one of the, the first uh, real pieces that I had done um, with embroidery that was on fabric was this uh, series. Um, I only have one image here, but this is, this is from a series of uh, embroideries that I had done uh, in situ. Um, so 
basically I just took a four inch embroidery hoop, put some fabric in it, went to a place and embroidered what place I was at. Um, and uh, this one here was done in the ocean. This was the second one in the series. The first one I had done in the shower. Uh, and then I have done, you know, in an elevator, uh, in, in the movie theater, um, in a few different spaces uh, under the blankets. And uh, what, what, I, what I learned very quickly is that um, doing embroidery in these sort of non-traditional spaces is very difficult. Uh, and um, you might think that just like standing in a shower with an embroidery hoop might not be that hard, but working with wet fabric and wet embroidery floss is very hard. And uh, this one was done in uh, the ocean uh, in like early April. Uh, so it was, it was very cold. It pr probably took me like half an hour to complete these, these three little words because it was so cold in that water. Um, and I wish I actually had an image of me in the water, but uh, uh, this, this was done uh, at uh, Parley Beach in uh, Shediac, New Brunswick. Um, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just sort of uh, going through these quickly. Um, if you have any questions about anything, we can go back afterwards and uh, and uh, go more into depth. Um, I I later started a series of embroideries of uh, art gallery floor plans. Um, and uh, my, my, I, I had always really been interested in floor plans as a, as a subject matter, um, because it's sort of like this, this uh, untalked about thing that's, that's a, a part of artists' lives. And uh, if you go on uh, a gal, or if you go on a website for most art galleries, uh, you have access to a floor plan. So if you're applying for a show, you can actually start thinking about how you would plan out that show in the space. Um, and um, yeah, I, I had uh, I had you know gone on a, a few websites of a few different art galleries and started to think about how interesting these floor plans were just as abstract shapes. Uh, and uh, specifically the uh, St. John Arts Center in St. John, New Brunswick uh, was one that, that really um, I, I just like fell in love with the shapes. I still haven't done an embroidery of that one, but I, I love the shapes of it. It's just a beautiful building. Um, and uh, so I, I started working on just a, a whole series of embroideries of these floor plans. Uh, this one here is of uh, Strutz Gallery in Sackville, New Brunswick. So the, the first image that I showed you of those uh, one inch drawings of houses was actually on this wall right here in the middle. Um, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I started working on them uh, thinking like, I don't know if, if I have any real sort of artistic uh, justification for this, but I just kind of like doing it. Like I, I like this as a subject matter and I'll sort of figure it out later um, what I'm working on. And so I, I kept doing them. Oh, this, this is, uh, this is Eastern Edge Gallery. So this this here is the actual gallery space, Rogue Gallery. This is the uh, studio space, the office. And here is the David Tuck Memorial Library up here. I tried to put these on the wall um, in the way that uh, the building is actually arranged. Um, but yeah, I'd, I would like to sort of play around with different arrangements of how these can go together. Uh, and then once I had done a few of these embroideries, um, I started thinking about which spaces I actually like thinking about. And um, the, the, the spaces that I really like thinking about are um, non-traditional gallery spaces where uh, the, the, peop the, the people who go in and see the arts aren't necessarily people who are going in to see arts. Uh, like coffee shops or bars uh, where, where we have exhibitions up. So th these two uh, floor plans here are for uh, 
uh, the old Toslo location for anyone who is in St. John's. Um, the, uh, the new Toslo location hasn't had any art exhibitions yet that I know of, but this is the old location. Uh, I've had a little exhibition right there in that space. Uh, and it, it's, it's nice because, you know, there, there are some pe people who go in um, and think like, oh, I'd, I'd like to see you know, Kevin's embroideries on the wall. So I'm going to go go in and check that out. But a lot of the people who end up seeing the artwork are people who are just going in for a cup of coffee. Uh, and, and those are really the people who I would prefer to make art for a lot of the time. And this other space here is the Charlotte Street Art Center. Uh, and I, I showed images of an uh, exhibition in there. So this, this is the hallway right here. And uh, this is the ramp uh, where I sort of changed direction with the embroidery. Um, and the reason I, I put this on here is because of, although this is considered uh, an actual gallery space, um, uh, a lot of the people who uh, go to this space are people who are going to the washroom of um, the Charlotte Street Art Center. The space to the right here is a dance studio. If you go up the ramp and uh, to the left and down a set of stairs, there's a really good pizza place. And so uh, most of the people who actually go in and see the art aren't going there to see the art. They're there to get a slice of pizza. Um, and so I, I really just fell in love um, with that. Uh, and uh, the next image is the project that I'm actually working on for this residency. Uh, which is a cross stitch um, uh, with instructions on how to tie a butcher's knot. Uh, and the idea for this sort of came from um, this, this weird sort of life that I live where I've, I've got all these different worlds that kind of don't interact with each other. So I, I have like an art life. I have a Sobeys life. Right now I have a quilt shop life uh, and uh, I also just have like a nerd life because I'd love to just be here reading Spider-Man. And, and um, none of these uh, worlds tend to overlap with each other at all. Uh, and, you know, I, I had, uh, I've been working at Sobeys for almost 14 years, if you can believe that. Uh, and at, at no point in my time at Sobeys have I ever thought, I'm going to do art about anything that that I've done here. Um, but eventually I, I started to think about, um, you know, there are, there are things at Sobeys that I am actually very knowledgeable about. And, um, and so there's, there's things that I can use um, from what I know. And um, I've, I've been working in the meat department at Sobeys for 10 or 11 years. And so I'm actually quite knowledgeable about meat and uh, um, the, uh, the, the idea for this project sort of came from um, me working in a, in a meat shop, basically um, cutting steaks, uh, which is really sort of a traditionally uh, male-based job. A lot of the people who I've worked with are just like old middle-aged men who just want to stand around and talk about hockey and beer. Um, and right now I'm also working at East Coast Quilt Co. Uh, here in St. John's uh, and um, I'm the only guy who works there and I would say probably like 95 or more percent of our customers are women there and um, what, what I find really interesting is that the, the jobs that I do in these two different uh, places are actually very similar. It, like I, I cut a steak, I sell it to a customer. I cut fabric, I sell it to a customer. The, the tools that I'm using to cut are different, but the, the actual movement is the same. Um, the, the customers are different, but the actions are the same. Uh, and yeah, so I, I just I, I started thinking about how I can sort of combine these two worlds of uh, you know, like textiles, uh, fabric, and uh, basically meat and, and Sobeys. 
Um, and so um, th this is what came of uh, thinking about that. And it, it's interesting because uh, uh, a, a butcher's knot is, is a knot that's used to uh, tie uh, usually roasts together. If you, if you have a, a beef roast that's sort of falling apart or it, it, it helps with certain parts of the cooking process. Um, but uh, for, for many years, I was not using a proper butcher's knot, which is a specific knot that's used to tie these ropes, roasts. I was, I was doing it wrong. And then um, later on, I sort of fell in love with a knot um, that I was uh, taught when I was taught knitting. And so I was, I was absolutely using the wrong knot there because this is, this is a knot that's used uh, in knitting and not in cutting meat. Um, and then later on, I decided to learn how to tie a butcher's knot. And I, I read the instructions and, and really just um, liked them as words and decided to, uh, to do a cross stitch of them. And uh, so it, it's not quite done yet. Uh, I have three steps here. There is a, a fourth step, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's on its way. And here's a, a more close up um, to look at that. Um, and uh, I uh, recently uh, made my first quilt and that is something that I uh, plan on continuing with. Um, this was uh, all done completely by hand. I do not own a sewing machine. Um, so I, I did uh, all of this by hand. Um, and I learned a lot about um, working with fabric uh, from doing this. Uh, and now that I am more knowledgeable about how quilting works, I plan on doing um, more quilts that are um, sort of following the ideas I've been thinking about with this cross stitch. Um, and uh, another thing that I wanted to talk to, which is really just unrelated to anything else is that I've been sort of studying on and off uh, at Memorial University creative writing. And one thing that I have been uh, really interested in lately is a, a specific uh, form of poem called the Cento. Um, and how Cento's work is each line of a Cento is actually taken from another poem written by somebody else. So it's sort of like a collage uh, built from poetry. Uh, and I have been just uh, for, I don't know, since August, I think I've been collecting lines that utilize colors um, from uh, different books of poetry. I've, I've probably collected lines from, I don't know, 70 or 80 books of poetry. Uh, and I'm just keeping them all in, in documents uh, organized and stuff. Uh, and so this is just a quick chanto that I wrote like two days ago. Uh, I, I didn't actually mean for it to be anything uh, good or anything. I, I just sort of modeled it off of uh, Black and Yellow by Wiz Khalifa. So these, uh, these lines here uh, have Black and Yellow, Black and Yellow, Black and Yellow, Black and Yellow. And they're all from poems written by different people um including uh I, there's a jan's wiki poem in here there's a anna swanson poem in here um there's uh yeah there's uh written on by all different people and and so um i i have been uh spending more time collecting uh than actually putting them together into poems so this is more of like an idea that i plan on working with in the future um but i i had told somebody uh, at work uh, at the quilt shop about you know, this this project that I had started working on and uh, the first thing she said was oh it's it's like you're making a quilt out of words and uh, I as, as soon as she said that I, I just thought oh man that that just ties everything together that that really uh, that is that's what I want to do I like I like I, I want to um, yeah, I want to take these lines and actually make something with them. Um, and so this, uh, you know, I've been, I've been working with these for a little while, but uh, the, the idea is still sort of being hashed out. Um, and I'd love some input on it. 
And I think that's actually my, my last slide. So we can just, yeah. So if anybody has any questions,